Welcome to the channel, everyone. Today, we're going back to school, which is kind of an ironic statement because what I'm covering today is not taught in schools at all. And of course, it's the topic of financial education. And there are a ton of topics that fall under the category of financial education. And I'm just gonna cover a few that I feel are must knows for anyone that wants to get a hold of their financial situation and learn about money. The first topic is one that's very misunderstood, and that's compound interest. You may have heard people mention it before, or maybe you even read about it in a book or saw it in an article. But today I'm gonna to simplify it so you know exactly what it is and how it works. So typically there are two categories of interest when it comes to accumulation, and that's simple interest and compound interest. I believe it's a lot easier to learn how compound interest works when you are looking at it in comparison to simple interest. So here's an example of simple interest right here. So on this chart, you can see we have the year, the principal, the interest rate, the interest earned, and the balance. So this example is assuming you put in $1,000 one time and that's all. So in year one, you make 10% on that $1,000, which is $100. And that brings your balance to $1,100. Then in year two, you'll make another 10% on that original $1,000, which is another $100, bringing your balance to $1,200. And the same thing happens for year three, another 10% on that $1,000, which is another $100, and now your balance at the end of three years is $1,300. So that's how simple interest works. You're gonna to continue to earn an interest on that original amount you invested, and that's all. Now, when it comes to compound interest, it's a little different because in year one, you see you have that same $1,000, you make 10%, which is $100, and your balance is $1,100. Now, in year two, you'll still earn 10% on that original $1,000 that you invested, but you'll also earn 10% on that $100 that you earned the previous year, meaning now you're earning interest on $1,100 for the second year. So that's why the interest earned is $110, which brings your balance to $1,210. Then in year three, still 10% on the original $1,000 plus 10% on that $110 and another 10% on the $100, which means you earn $121 interest that year. So now you can see your balance is $1,331. So just from these three years, you can see where it's a difference when it comes to the compound interest. Now this compounding interest happens every year after year. So compound interest is literally your interest, earning interest on top of interest over and over and over. So let me show you how much of a difference compound interest can make when we run this example for 30 years out. At the bottom, you can see that the simple interest would have grown from $1,000 to $4,000, but your compound interest would have grown to $17,449.40, which is a massive difference. And here's a chart that shows you how compound interest really starts to take off over time. So you can obviously see why so many people are always trying to get compound interest on their money. Next, I wanna go over a money concept that goes hand in hand with compound interest. And this concept is called the rule of 72. This concept is extremely important because it gives the everyday person a simple way to measure the growth of compounded money. I mean, you can always use a compound interest calculator, but this formula is something that you can do on the fly. So here's how it works. So when doing this calculation, you wanna take the interest rate that you're earning and divide it into the number 72. For example, if we take a look at each one of these color sections, you can see that each section is actually earning a different interest rate. So here in the blue section, you can see that the interest rate is 1%. So what you'll do is take one and divide it into 72. And the answer that you come up with tells you an approximate amount of years it'll take for that money to double. So one divided into 72 is 72. So if someone's earning 1% on their money, their money's gonna double every 72 years. So here we're looking at an individual that's 29 years old and they invested $10,000. And since they're earning 1% on their money, it's expected that their money would double to 20,000 by the age 101. And as bad as that may look to you, you have to understand that most people have their money parked in the bank, not even earning 1% at all. So that means a double probably won't happen in their lifetime. Now, if we look at the gray area, you can see an example of the same person earning 10% of their money. 10 divided into 72 is 7.2. That means their money will double around every seven years. So you can see that same $10,000 with more doubles would have grown to around $640,000 by age 72, which is a day and night difference. Now it's also important to understand that these numbers can work for you or they can work against you. Now let's say you have a credit card that's charged you 25%. That means your debt will literally double every two to three years. 
That's why it's so important to always pay attention to the interest rate that you're earning on your money and the interest rate that you're paying on your debt. Next, I want to teach you the difference between an average return and an actual return. This is also important to understand because this is how a lot of people get misled and manipulated. And my goal is to educate you so you don't get taken advantage of. Also, so that if anyone ever presents this to you, you know exactly what questions to ask them. So in this chart, we're starting off with an example of $100,000. We have the year, the annual return for that year, the annual gain or loss, and we have the in-year account balance. So let's say in year one, the account grew 50%. That means we would have made $50,000 that particular year, bring our balance to 150,000, which is the 50,000 plus the original $100,000. In year two, our investment dropped 50%. So that year we lost $75,000, bringing our balance to $75,000. Now in year three, our investment grew by 150% which is $112,500. And that brought our balance up to $187,500. Then in year four, we lost another 50% in our investment. So we end up losing $93,750 that year, bringing our balance down to $93,750. So how did our overall investment do? So here's how you calculate the average return. You look at the annual return and you're gonna add up the 50%, the negative 50%, the 150%, and then the negative 50%. And what you come up with is 100. Now you take that 100 and divide it by four because there's four years. And what that leaves you with is an average rate of return of 25%. And when you speak to someone about investments, they're gonna typically tell you that number. Oh, it's been averaging X percent for the last five years, 10 years or whatever. Now here's the truth. I don't wanna say the truth because technically that's not a lie, it is averaging 25%. But what you really care about is what is the actual return on your money? Because when you look at the example, you start off with $100,000 invested into whatever this is, but now you have $93,750 and you don't need a finance degree to know you lost money. So your actual return or your real return is negative 6.25% because you lost 6.25% of your $100,000. So you can see how these numbers can easily manipulate someone or persuade someone to think an investment is doing a lot better than what it actually is. And that's why you don't typically hear people quoting actual rate of returns. They're always talking about what is the average rate of return. But now you guys know the truth. And next we have the high cost of waiting. There's something about human nature that makes us always want to procrastinate with doing things we know we should be doing. But here's an example of why you definitely don't want to procrastinate when it comes to saving money. This chart shows you an example of how much money you would need to save on a monthly basis to reach a million dollars, depending on how many years you have left to save. And this is also assuming an 8% rate of return. So at the bottom left, it tells you that if somebody has 40 years left to saving for a goal or retirement, whatever it may be, they just have to save $286.45 and they'll reach a million dollars. But what if they wait five years? Well, if they wait five years to start saving, they'll have to save $435.94 a month to reach that same goal. What if they wait 20 years to start saving? Then they'll have to save $1,697.73 a month if you have 20 years till retirement or whatever that goal you're achieving. So if you look at the bottom of the chart, you can look at the number of years and you can see exactly how much money it would take on a monthly basis at 8% rate of return to reach that million dollars. Now this chart isn't made to discourage you, it just shows you that the best time to start saving and investing is always going to be today. Every one of these red blocks are in five year increments. And just that five years alone is making a huge difference in how much you have to save every single month. So find your time horizon, and then you can clearly see how much you need to save every single month starting today. So those are just a few financial concepts I wanted to share with you guys today. I know there are many more I'll make more videos on different topics, but take these, study them, rewatch the video if you need to, because these are things that should have been taught in school, but unfortunately they weren't, so maybe you're learning it for the first time here. Either way, at least you know now. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and drop a comment about a specific topic you may want me to cover in the future. And I'll see you guys in this next video.